Uh, in this video, we're going to be covering um, using arrays in C and C++. Okay, so, you know, I, I assume that uh, you, you've already did array processing in your intro to programming course uh, in some language, okay? So, um, many languages, you know, like Java, Python, have something like an array um, or a list uh, that, that work pretty similar to the way they work in C and C++, okay? So, so this should, hopefully should be a bit of a review for you, but um, um, although in particular, so, so we'll look at declaring arrays and accessing them in C++ um, and processing them, but also um, I want to spend a little bit of time and talk about passing arrays as parameters to functions um, because one of our first or second assignment, um, we're going to be doing that. So you got to understand how to do that. Um, and then I might quick, very quickly, um, if it doesn't take me too long here, look at arrays of characters, okay? So this, this is how we used to do um, strings or textual data in original the original C language, okay? Okay, so let me open up. So we're working on the, the one called unit whatever um, arrays here. So usually the first unit for our data structures class. Um, and let me get on to the main function here. Um, all right. So let's look at just declaring arrays to begin with um, in C and C++. So everything I say here is really the same for C and C++. So arrays work basically the same in both uh, languages here. So, um, so arrays are a collection of a fixed number of components. So they have a fixed size, right? And you have to specify that size when you declare the array. Um, and all the components are of the same type, all right? So we declare actually three arrays here. Um, <clears throat> uh, we, per, we declare an array of doubles. So, so there, there's, there's actually 10 doubles in this array. So, so the syntax is you give the name of the array and then use the, the open and close square brackets. And then you have the size, the, the fixed size of the collection here, okay? So in this case, I used a constant um, integer expression to initialize the size of my doubles, okay? So you can use just a, a constant, um, you know, a literal value, like, so this one is going to be an array of five integers, fixed size of five integers. This is going to be an array of fixed size of 42 of day of the week, where this day of the week is um, uh, that enumerated type that we used in the previous video, okay? Uh, so so the, the point of that is that, you know, you can have arrays of kind of the built-in types, doubles and ints, but you can have arrays of user-defined types. Uh, so we'll use that a lot. So, so you know, like, like a day of, uh, an array of days of the week, but you can have arrays of classes and structures and things that, when we get to those um, as well, okay? Um, before I move on from this, um, you really shouldn't use magic numbers in programs like 5 and 42 here. So... This is fine for small things or examples and stuff, but when we get when you're working on your assignments, you'll see that we pretty much avoid having magic numbers in here. These, you know, people who come to your code who who haven't been working on it won't necessarily know why you need the size of five or something like that. Or if they see that number like in a loop in order to control going through the elements of an array. Um, you know, the, 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 the reason why it's five is less, you know, um, readable. It's, it's less understandable. So you should really, you should always be using some sort of um, a constant expression for the size of your arrays usually, right? So in this case, um, I mean, it's not a very good name, but, but my doubles size. Um, so I only did that one so I could talk about this, but, but I'm going to be using my doubles here um, in... Um, below for my loops and stuff, so so I want to use that constant when, when we do loops here. Um, all right, so ar arrays in C and C++ are indexed starting at zero, uh, which is pretty common. I mean, there are some languages, I, I don't know, MATLAB I use a bit, which starts indexing at one for arrays, Pascal used to, uh, but a lot of, a lot of Languages are kind of derived from or inspired by C that are really popular nowadays, Java, Python, um, others. And, and they all start indexing at zero. So what that means is, so for an array like my integers that has a fixed size of five values, 
That means the actual indexes, the valid indexes, are from 0 to 4, all right? So here, I, and, and so here we have an example of how you actually um, set a value. So this, this is how you write a value to uh, one of the locations of your array. So you specify an index, like 0, 0 is the first index, um, or I'll probably use, like, say, the zeroth index of my array. And we assigned it a value of 4. So my integers is an array of integers, so we can assign an integer value. And 4 is the last valid index of my integers array. And we assign it a value 33, okay? My days of the week actually holds uh, the enumerated type, um, the, the, the days of the week. So if I want to assign a value into it, I need to assign one of the enumerated types, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, okay? So here, you know, that, and, and okay, a real quick quiz, what are the valid indexes for my days of the week, right? It, it has, it's a size of 42, it's a fixed size of 42, so that means the valid indexes are from 0 to 41. So 33 is safe, it's in that valid range of indexes, okay? So you must be very careful um, when accessing an array beyond the declared bounds. Okay, so my integers... Um, has a fixed size of 5, but that means the valid indexes are from 0 to 4. So now the thing is, is, that, is that C and C++ uh, assume that you know what you're doing, okay? And they will allow you to do things that are um, not really safe uh, and that are downright dangerous, including doing things like trying to access or um, um, reference arrays beyond their bounds beyond the end of the array, okay? So the C++ compiler, if I do something like try to assign a value to index 5, won't do anything. Um, it, it'll actually compile. So, so if we try compiling that, um, um, it should be, there's some warnings here, but, but, but it actually compiles and links it together. So I have my, my, um, my um, executable. Um, and it will actually run this as well. So if I run this, um, without any ill effect, um, or without any seeming ill effect, okay? So if we start running and step over this, so here I'm about ready to, you know, the, the valid values of my integer, the index are, are actually 0 to 4, as you can see from my, um, from the, uh, from, from Visual Studio, it's kind of helpful, it, it pops up a, um, 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 the, the, the values of this array is not too big. I don't know what it does if your array is really big, but um, but yeah, here, here's all the values. Notice we've initialized index 0 and index 4 um, in previous um, code that we stepped through here. So if we step over this, um, it will, um, yeah, so, so nothing happened, nothing crashes. If, if we look at the array, um, you know, we don't see the value 42 in there anywhere, right? Um, And what happened is whatever was in memory beyond my integers, which was most likely uh, maybe my days of the week, um, uh, 42 got written somewhere into the the array my days of the week. Maybe it, 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 you know, it's not always that's not always true. It depends on how memory gets laid out on the stack and how the compiler does things. Okay, but but the point is is that you know this this the, the compiler allows this. It doesn't stop this. Um, and I just wrote some random value into memory that I wasn't expecting, into, you know, maybe some value of my days of the week or something else, right? Um, so you always have to be very careful about making certain that your access... This is the most common problem in this class. We do a lot of stuff with memory management and accessing memory um, and accessing arrays. And it's very easy to do something that, that uh, inadvertently accesses um, like an, a, an array of values, a block of values beyond where, where you meant to, beyond the end of it. Now, and actually in the best case, so you notice we didn't crash here. So this is kind of really the worst case scenario because we didn't crash, but, but most likely we, we wrote something somewhere else that we didn't mean to. So that would probably end up manifesting itself as a bug that, that will have our head scratching. So why did we see that value? 
And we'll have to go go back and track that down by maybe setting watch points or things like that to find out exactly why or when the value changed unexpectedly, okay? Um, uh, actually, the best case scenario is when your program actually crashes because then you're able to immediately know that um, something somewhere was illegally written or accessed, okay? So uh, most likely, if, if you try and uh, write or read too far past the end of your array, you're going to end up trying to access memory that doesn't belong to your program. Um, and when you do that, th that causes what's known as a bounds access error or a bounds memory violation. And that will actually cause the um, operating system or the CPU to stop your program to, to uh, you know, so in that case, um, an interrupt gets thrown if, if you try to access memory that doesn't belong to your program, which will ultimately cause your program to be um, um, crashed, to, to, to be interrupted, okay? So yeah, most likely, I haven't tried this in a while, but if, if I uncomment that, let's, let's stop um, and recompile. And then run again. Should probably should have set a breakpoint here. So let's, let's set a breakpoint right here and run down to that part. Um, so now if, if we step over this, uh, we see that an exception has occurred, right? So here the, the, the debugger caught my exception here. So if we look at our stack, um, we, we, we paused on our exception. Don't know if we can get more information out of that. Um, so yeah, here in the debug console, we see that it received a SIG bus, so a, a bus signal error um, at that location, basically because we tried to access memory that doesn't belong to us. That caused an interrupt, um, which ended up in, in um, this exception, um, or, or this um, you know, our program crashing at that point. Okay? What you'll normally, if you, if you run the program by hand, what you would normally see, um, so if I run that program, um, from the command line, um, you get um, you can get various different messages, but be yeah, it's a segmentation fault is often um, an indication of illegally accessing memory somewhere beyond the bounds of your um, of, of of the memory that you own for your program. Okay, let's uh, let's move on. So. Uh, I mean, the, the whole point of that, though, is, is you know, you will we'll be doing a lot of memory management and memory access. Uh, so C is powerful, and C++ is powerful because it allows you to do to, 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 to do low-level stuff, like directly accessing and managing memory. So that's both good and bad, you know. So the, 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 and the bad thing is it's very easy to mess up, um, and it's, it can be very tough to track down errors or bugs being caused by incorrect memory management or incorrect access to memory like that, so... Um, okay, so let's recompile that and run back down to this point. Um, okay, so I think that's mostly what I wanted to say about the basics here. I think the rest of this we're just kind of demonstrating. So you can also read the values back out of the arrays. I don't know if we showed that, but but yeah. So if if, if uh, so, you can use that on the left hand side of an assignment to write a value into an array at a particular index, or you can again use the square brackets um, on the right hand side of some expression to read the value out. So here we're, re we're reading the 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 zeroth index and the fourth um, index value of my integers, and, and displaying those um, on our terminal here. Um, and here we're accessing the day of weeks. I, I also pulled over the function convert days of the week string um, so that we can, you know, access the value at, at, at index 33 of my days of the week array, and then we convert that to a string so we can um, see the day of the week that we have at index 33 of the array. You can, you, any place that you can use like a, um, a, a defined variable, um, you can also use um, you know, you can reference some location in the array, right? So we can do calculations with, with values in an array. So I can add together the zeroth and fourth value in my integers, which was, what was it, uh, 33 plus 10, should be 43, right? Um, um, so another thing, um, 
that's a very common mistake to make. Uh, you should never act, try to access the contents of a variable that you haven't initialized yet. This, this goes for regular variables as well as arrays of, of variables, array, arrays of data. Um, so so a, a variable with a single data item or, or an array with multiple data items, it, it's always unsafe if, if I haven't first initialized it. In fact, um, for, for single variables, um, the compiler will catch that if you try to access an uninitialized, but it won't catch it for arrays, um, as you see, so it actually compiled this fine. But there's actually garbage, um, um, you know, so, so it, uh, C, so some, in some environments it might initialize your arrays to zero, but not always, and it's not safe to assume that. You should always initialize all the locations of your array. So my, um, b besides the two values that we wrote, zero and four, all the other values had some random garbage in there, right? And, and we should see that when we try and print it out, right? Likewise with my days of the week. So here, you know, um, um, who knows what's in there? And, 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 and this could be really dangerous because, you know, the enumerated type, um, the only valid value should be like zero to six, like like uh, because there's seven days in the week. So who knows what will get displayed um, if we try and um, convert one of those enumerated types here. Um, right. So our our switch statement inside the function caught that as an unknown uh, setting of the enumerated type. So anyway. So you should always initialize your variables. Um, so it, it's common when you're working with arrays to basically use this um, this pattern uh, of, of a for loop. Okay, and in fact, for loops in C were really created for doing array processing like this because it was so common. It's it's it's, it's one of the most common things you do with C uh, when you're writing programs in C. So, you know, a for loop, as you should kind of recall, this is, this is supposed to be a bit of a review, um, takes kind of three parts. So it takes a, a statement to initialize. Uh, usually you initialize a, an in, a variable you use to index the array that you're processing. And, and then the middle part is a test. Uh, this test happens at the bottom of the loop. Um, and if it's true, that you keep doing the loop, um, and if it's false, then, then you stop doing the loop, okay? So as long as the index is less than the, 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 the size of, you know, the number of values in my double size, which there was 10 values in, in this my doubles array here. So this will iterate through all 10 of those values, uh, in, in this case, initializing them all to some expression, okay? And since we actually use the index as part of the ex expression, each one of these values will get initialized to a different value, okay? So I'm not going to step through all 10 of those. Let's set another breakpoint here. Uh, and then likewise, though, you know, we can also use the same kind of a loop, but in this, in this case, instead of writing into, uh, you know, to initialize our my doubles, um, I'm reading the doubles back out to see what the values were that we got initialized in here by this expression here, okay? So again, let's set a breakpoint so we can do all 10 of this loop here. Um, so these were the 10 values we ended up with, right? Um, so just to double check ourselves, so when index was zero, we took zero minus five, so that's negative five, we squared that, that was um, um, uh, 25, so negative five squared is 25, so 15 minus 25 is negative 10, the absolute value of that is 10. And, yeah, if you check that, this, we should get that for all the, the rest of the errors. So. Um, just another example, finding some squares, something that you have to do, I think, for the first assignment or something similar to this, right? Um, so we're just squaring every value, every um, value that we have in my doubles, and then we're just summing that up. So the result at the end of this should be, if you square every one of those values and sum that up, that's what we should get as our result after doing all this here. So presumably if you do that, it should be 1033, all right? Um, kind of a side note, so this is a new feature in C++ as of like the C++ 0x, which came out in 2000, so it's not that new. Um, 
uh, these are known as range-based uh, iterators, but these are these are really nice because mo many programming languages have like a for loop, but but they don't work like an index controlled loop like in C. Uh, they work to basically to iterate over every value in like a list or an array. So you can do that kind of same thing with these range-based loops um, in C++. So, so to read this, basically what I'm saying, so on the right-hand side, you need some sort of a collection like an array, and it works with regular C arrays like my doubles. So this loop, uh, so every time through this loop, um, the, the, the value in this local variable called a double will have the next value. So the first time in the loop, a double will be 10. The second time in the loop, it'll be one. And it will only iterate for the number of times that you have the, the number of values in my doubles, okay? So that's very nice. Um, 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 so, um, um, so this implies that something actually knows the size of your array here, right? Um, because you know you're not specifying exactly how how many times to iterate through the the loop here. So, um, so I skipped over that. I'm just gonna skip over that here. So this is an example of searching for the largest element, which is something else you might have to do. Pretty common for assignments in this class. All right. So anyway, um, uh, let's set a breakpoint just past that here. Um, and let's just show going through using this range-based iterator here. So, right. so the second one was, was using the, the range-based iterator, but, but we, we basically accessed all the values and displayed them. You know, these are the same values that we saw um, in the array using the indexed control. The in, this is called like an index controlled loop. This, this is kind of the original way that we did it in C. Uh, this is nice. If you need to iterate over all the values in an array, uh, you might want to use a range-based loop instead. Um, okay, so um, one of my major goals in this um, lecture video was to show passing arrays in as parameters to functions. So um, our first function is going to initialize uh, the purpose of this function is to initialize uh, an array that you pass it in. So we actually pass in two parameters to this function. The size of the array is the first parameter um, and the array itself. So notice we're, we're passing my doubles, which is an array of double values, right? Um, let's look at the implementation of the initial, initialize array of doubles, okay? So notice this is a void function, so it doesn't return a result. Uh, in this case, it returns the result um, um, implicitly because it returns the result by uh, by initializing the values in the array that you pass in. Okay, so again, notice notice the the parameters that come in as inputs to our array uh, to, to our function. Um, the the size, so it's expecting you have to tell it how big this array is that you pass in as the second parameter, and then you pass in the array of doubles. And and here, so this is you, you don't. Yeah, you may think that you're supposed to specify the size of the array um, like like that and not have the parameter, but that's not the way that arrays are passed in. That's not the way that, that arrays work to be passed into functions in C and C++. So, so you can't specify the size. You have to somehow know the figure out the size of the array. Okay, and let me caution you: you should never use like a global variable. So if I define my doubles size, whatever it was, as a global, uh, I could instead of passing in the size, I could have used that global value. But again, that's that's dangerous. That's relying on information that's external to the function. That that's breaking the idea that functions should be completely self-contained boxes. Okay, so. Um, I never allow you in this class to do that. You know, you, you know, if you're passing in an array to a function, uh, you always also have to pass in the size um, of the array as, as an additional parameter, right? But um, in like uh, when we get to talking about structures and classes, we'll see another way that you can do this, kind of pass in both the size and the array of values at the same time. So now notice. Um, this function, um, um, you couldn't see it here, so it looked like it only took two parameters as input, right? When we called initialize array of doubles. Uh, but um, um, if you look at the actual declaration of the function, so this is, again, this is the function signature here, uh, there's actually three parameters, so the size and the array, and 
There's a third one, which is the value that you want to initialize all of the, um, um, the, the, the indexes in the array to this particular value, okay? This is an example of what's known as a default parameter, right? So at any time, um, you can specify um, a default value for a parameter. And uh, default parameters have to come over, have to come after parameters that are that are declared without any default specified for them. And you can't really specify a default for an array, only for like what are known as scalars. So so for um, variables that hold a single value, right? Um, but you can specify defaults for for scalars like a double here. Uh, but but they they need to come at the end of your parameter list, all right? And if you specify a default, um, then, um, then then again you don't have to. If you don't specify that third parameter, it will use 0, 0.0. It, it basically, it will end up initializing the array to all zeros, right? But if you want to initialize it to a different value, I could could have specified a different value, like like 1.0 um, or, or whatever here. So um, some some other double value here for the third parameter as input, okay? All right, and then the, the other thing um, that I should uh, that, that I need to emphasize, right, is that arrays, unlike scalar values, like like so, other, unlike single values, like a, a single int or single double, so arrays of values are always passed in by reference instead of by value. Okay, so if you haven't watched the previous value, the, the previous video on functions or, or studied functions yet in C plus plus. Uh, or, or most most languages support passing in by value versus passing in by reference. Okay, so you should understand the difference between that. Um, and, and yeah, and, and arrays are passed in by by reference by default. And, and why is that? It's basically again because when I t I talked about this, it, when I talked about passing in by value versus passing in by reference, um, you could possibly be passing in an array with millions. Of values, so a very big array, large amounts of data. So it would be very inefficient if you passed it by value because that would force you to have to copy all the values of the array. So that's one of the reasons why, by default, arrays are always passed in by reference. Right? So you only pass in basically the base address, the, the starting of that block of memory of the array. Uh, and that means that, like, if I want to make a function that initializes the, uh, an array, since it's passed in by reference, uh, if I modify the, the locations of the array, I'm actually initializing the values in the array that's passed into me by the main function, okay? So um, the result of that is, if we go back and look at when we called this function, um, after we call initialize array of doubles, for my doubles, um, they will, uh, the, 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 my doubles, um, well, all, all, all of its index locations will be initialized to zero, okay, because it gets passed in by reference, all right? So, so the, all those, those values will get overwritten with and be initialized by zero here. So, um, so I'm not going to step through that function. Let's just uh, actually do it. Um, oops, what happened? Oh, I hit stop. Did I hit stop accidentally? I didn't mean to hit stop. Um, all right, let's rerun. Oh, um, let's get rid of all these other breakpoints. I don't know if there's a quick way to clear all these. It probably is. Um, okay, let's go back down here. Initialize and stop there then. All right. Um, Okay, so now if we look at my doubles, uh, see everything is zero, all right? So here's another example of, of, a, of a function that takes an array. So again, it takes the same two parameters. Um, well, actually, in this case, it only takes two parameters. It doesn't take a third uh, default parameter. So let's look at display array of doubles, okay? Um, uh, display array of doubles. There it is. Um, all right, so in this case, it takes two parameters again, the, the size of the array and then the array of doubles that we want to display. And then all it does, um, again, like, 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 like we did before, it just does an index controlled loop to, in this case, access each value and display it on the C out stream, all right? 
One thing I want to, the, the reason why I wrote this function, I want to emphasize, so notice the const here. So this is very important because, you know, arrays are passed in by reference, by default, right? So that means that, that if we wanted to, like, like we did for the previous function, we can actually modify the contents of the array and those will get returned back to the caller since they're both modifying the same location in memory. They're both referring to the same location in memory. So anything, any value I write in here, the caller of this function will see the, the changes that I made, okay? But lots of times you write functions where you want to have an array come in, but it's just being used as input. It's just being used for the calculations, right? So in that case, you, you should declare that the, the array is coming in as a constant parameter, okay? This means that I guarantee that I am not going to change the values of that, that parameter that you're passing in by reference here, right? Um, so I'm guaranteed after we return from this function, um, um, the, the contents of the array will still be the same. And in fact, it's a compiler error. The compiler will catch that. If you just declare a parameter to be constant, to, that, that's uh, an in, input parameter to a function, if I try and change it like that, and I try and recompile, um, you will get um, an error. Like the expression must be a modifiable, modifiable error value, L value. Okay. So sometimes, I mean, I know it. it you know, it's not all these these mess, error messages are not always the greatest that like the GNU compiler or most compilers will give you. But but yeah, I mean that's what it's basically saying. The L value is the array. The array we declared is going to be constant um, in our function here. But um, here we we clearly have an expression that would modify something in the array, right? So that's illegal since it's supposed to be a constant input parameter here. So all right. So let's return back to the debugger. So, um, so anyway, um, that's just another example of a function. So this one should, uh, I'll go ahead and again just continue over that one, but it'll display all the values of the, um, um, of the array, which is all zeros right now, because remember we just initialized it, so. If we continue on, or where's the output for that? Uh, Do we lose the output because I recompiled? Hmm. Let's um, let's uh, let's stop this and restart it here. So. There we go. So there, there was the output from calling the uh, display array of doubles. All right. Um, all right. So that that was examples of using um, arrays. So passing arrays as parameters to functions. Okay. So you ought to understand that because uh, we'll be doing that for like our first and second assignment. So. Okay. And then as the last thing, I kind of want to go through this quickly, um, but I, I may have mentioned it in, in a previous video. Um, so in, in plain C, the, the way that we used to process textual data was to use arrays of characters, okay? So they were just regular arrays like we just talked about, like an array of characters. So here we have an array that can hold up to 16 characters, right? And you can initialize it like we did before. So these are single character val um, um, th So this array holds single characters, uh, up to 16 characters. So the, the way to initialize single characters is to initialize it with a, a character literal, like capital D, little e, and so on, right? Um, um, I probably should have mentioned it above, but you can use curly braces to uh, initialize arrays uh, with a list of values. I could have done this with like doubles and integers above. Uh, you'll see this in the assignments used a lot for small arrays, right? So, so you can do that with character arrays as well. You can initialize it to an array, uh, to, to a, a list of single characters. Uh, notice um, the backslash zero. So I've actually character uh, six is this null character, right? Um, now, um, because text processing is something that was um, needed a lot of, there, there was a few special things that were added into the C language. So, for example, you could also initialize an array of characters by giving it a string literal. 
So this would have the same effect as initializing index 0 to be capital H, index 1 to be capital A, and so on, okay? Um, and so then, you know, we can, we can step through these and see these. And, and so um, the output stream in C++ also knows, knows how to handle arrays of characters. So you, so, um, you can't do this for, for other kinds of arrays, which is why I wrote a function. But again, um, it treats arrays of characters especially. Um, so it has a, um, a special function written so it knows how to display an array of characters as like a string to an output stream, okay? So if we display my name and my other name, um, we should see my name is uh, Derek Hyder there, all right? Um, so I, I just uh, just to end this then, so uh, in like a previous video when I talked about strings, um, the, the string library, if you look at the reference on the c++.com, which I've been using usually for references, uh, you'll find that um, uh, that the the C++ string classes are actually uh, defined in, uh, so, and this is a little bit confusing, but but the, the, the library and the header for it is called string. But that's the thing that holds the, the new C++ string classes um, that, um, um, so and and you know for the string uh, class you know that and so the normal way that you work with C++ strings um, is to call member functions like size and clear and empty and and a search and things like that on it okay so somewhat confusingly so that's why you have to include if you want to use the new C++ string objects and that's what you should use for this class because we are programming in C++ but um, if you want to use old style C, um, um, character arrays of character to do st string processing you use the c string library so everything with a c something these are the old uh, plain c libraries uh, that you can use in c++ and c++ is a superset of c uh, but you really shouldn't be using the c string library i mostly mention this in case you do have to use um, um, just plain c somewhere or i mean you might find code that is using like old arrays of characters to do um, string processing, so um, or is it there? The C string, okay. So these in the C string library are just uh, functions that you can call. So for example, if you want to find the length of a old array of characters, you know, C style strings. So these are often called C style strings, which are you know arrays of characters. So if you want to find the length of it, you would have to include the C string library. Um, and do a string length, str length. If you click on that, you'll see that string length is just a regular function that takes, um, th this means it actually takes a, a, an array of characters, okay? So when we talk about pointers, I'll talk about why an array of characters can also be re referred to as a character pointer here, okay? Um, and it returns actually a length, um, which is a, a size t here, all right? Um, So I actually already included C string. Um, so I've, I've got both string and C string include, uh, included up here in, in this uh, example code. So because I have that, um, I can do something like um, the, the length of my name, my full name is Right, um, so that should compile and run. So we're, we're calling the string length function. We're passing it an array of characters. My full name, which has um, 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 oh, it doesn't have anything in it yet. So I shouldn't use my full name. So I meant to talk about that, but um, I'll leave that comment there. So let's let's do my other name. There we go. Um, yeah. So if you actually want to concatenate arrays of characters, you need to use the string cat function. Um, which is another function um, that uh, was in the C string library, um, strcat string cat. Okay. All right, uh, but anyway, back to string length. Let's compile it, Control Shift 2, um, and um, 
let's just uh, run it here. So yeah, if we step over that, we should see that the my string length is six because the, my other name just has the, the harder in there. So notice it's six characters, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So uh, so you might, a perceptive student might be asking, so how does string length know the name, the, the, the length of this array of characters that I pass in? So I just, I, I just finished saying when we wrote some functions that took arrays, that you need to pass in the, the length, the size of the array, okay? The way it does that is it uses another method to figure out the end of you know the 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 the, the number of values that are in the array, and it uses this uh, special uh, flag, the null terminator. Okay, so all um, character arrays that you want to use to represent C style strings have to be terminated with a null terminator. Okay, that's why we put the backslash zero in here, and that's why when we call string length, it can correctly determine that the length of the, the my other string. Well, in this case, if, if you initialize it with a, um, a string literal, it will put in the null character for you. Okay, so the null character is there both for the, the one that I initialize using this initializer list, and it's also in here for my other name because it puts it in there for you if you initialize an array of characters with, um, with, with a string literal here with the double quotes. All right. Okay, so that was basically everything I want to talk about in this video. Um, here's a um, um, couple of things that we referenced uh, here, um, some, some, some tutorials um, and, and the C-string um, um, reference in C++.com. Um, and uh, hopefully that was uh, useful, and I will see you guys then in our next video.